What is an Italian style house? With cupolas, tall window arches, hipped roofs, and bracketed cornices, this style was popular between 1840 and 1885. Stick around, this video will cover a variety of Italian style homes built before the Civil War in the city of St. Louis. Make sure to subscribe and let us know which house is your favorite in the comments. My name is Nathan Jackson. Welcome to this house. One of the oldest frame houses in St. Louis is the Alexander Lacey Lyle House, which was built in 1842 in the Italian style. However, due to its early period of construction, it also has some Greek Revival influence in the construction of the house, such as the flat lintels above each of the windows. It also has some early Victorian influence with the gingerbreading on the rear service wing of the house. Alexander Lacey Lyle was descended from a Amos Custis Lyle, who was related to Martha Washington, but he moved to Carondelet in 1770 as one of the earliest residents of the area, and his grandson, Alexander Lacey Lyle, is the one who built this house. During the Civil War, because Alexander Lyle was a Confederate sympathizer, he was essentially run out of St. Louis, and so the property that he owned at the time was turned over to the city of St. Louis and later became part of the grounds for Carondelet Park. Today, it is one of St. Louis's oldest frame homes. It also features a large hipped roof and multiple tall chimneys around the whole house. So the Henry Shaw house in the Missouri Botanical Gardens was constructed in 1849 and designed by George Barnett. So one reason that the house is called the Tower Grove House is because of the large Italian style cupola that is on the front of Henry Shaw's country home. And right out in front of the home, Henry Shaw had a grove of trees planted and you could see the tower through the trees and that's why it's known as Tower Grove. Originally, Henry Shaw had much more land and much of his land was actually donated to the city in 1868 to create Tower Grove Park. What was left of his land was kept as the botanical gardens. He was the caretaker and owner of the botanical gardens until his death in 1889, at which time Henry Shaw's city home, which was located at 7th and Locust Street downtown, was moved to the garden, deconstructed and reconstructed based on Henry Shaw's will because Henry Shaw did not trust the city of St. Louis to preserve his property. He was probably very wise for his time because today the site where his house used to be is now a parking lot for Hotel St. Louis. In 18 90, the original eastern wing of the home was actually demolished and replaced by a larger wing and at which point they also decided to introduce indoor plumbing and various different features and the Henry Shaw country residence later became the superintendent's home. So this house is one of the oldest houses in the Hyde Park neighborhood. It was originally built in 1851 for a guy named William O. Shands. William O. Shands was a contractor in the city of St. Louis, and before moving to this area in Hyde Park, he lived in downtown St. Louis. Back in 1851 when the house was built, Hyde Park was still the independent city of Brandman. It was later annexed by the city of St. Louis in 1855 when St. Louis expanded itself to Grand Boulevard. The house originally was built in federal style as an eye house and what an eye house is is a rural style of home that is commonly seen in Indiana, Iowa, and Illinois which is where it gets the name I-House. In 1856 to 1857, the house was updated in the Italian style. The cast iron lintels and hipped roof in the widow's walk were added around that time most likely. Today, this is one of the oldest surviving homes in the Hyde Park neighborhood and also one of the oldest homes 
throughout the North St. Louis area. The Eugene Miltonberger House is one of the first houses in the Dutchtown area. It was built in 1855, just off the Stringtown Road, which is today's Virginia Avenue. It was built for Eugene and Mary Miltonberger. As you can see, the house has a hipped roof and a large gallery porch, which faces the side of the house now as it faces Osceola Street. But originally, this house was built with the gallery porch on the front as that was the view facing the Mississippi River at the time. The rest of the Dutchtown neighborhood was built up around it in the following years beginning in the late 19th and early 20th century. Today the house has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. So in 1855 Johann Adam Lemp plotted out a bunch of land which he owned on 2nd Carondelet Avenue which is today's 18th Street. Street, 13th Street, and Domeno Place, depending on where on the street you are. This section, which we we're talking about today, is called Domeno Place. Originally, Lemp built an Italian country style mansion right at the corner of Cherokee and 2nd Carondelet Avenue. Unfortunately, that house was torn down at some point in the mid 20th century. One of the next houses to be built on the street was the Frederick Heitkamp Mansion, which was built in 18. 65, also in the Italian country style, and it features a hipped roof, transom windows, and two different styles of arches, the segmented arch and a traditional tall and thin arch. During the Prohibition era in the 1920s, the basement of this home became the site of a speakeasy and also it has a wine cellar in its sub-basement. By the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, this house was being used as a 12-family apartment. Today it's been reduced to a six-family apartment. So Louis A. Benoist was one of the most prominent figures in early St. Louis and he was actually born here in 1803. As he got older, he became a very prominent banker in early St. Louis, and in 1838, he built a house at 8th and Pine in downtown St. Louis on the site of today's arcade building. By 1853, most likely due to the cholera epidemic, he decided to have a country house built way out in St. Louis County in what is today considered Afton. He hired George I. Barnett, who had recently built city and country homes for Henry Shaw, to design his house also in the Italian style. The Louis A. Benois mansion, which is known as Oakland, also features a very large Italian style cupola, as well as some classical influences such as the pediment above the left side of the home. This is one of the only stone Italian homes in the city of St. Louis and definitely the only one designed in the Italian country villa style. Tune in for part two to see the Italian country style homes in St. Louis County, including the McLagan House, which was built in 1863. If you would like to see these houses in person, follow me at St. Louis History and Architecture on Facebook and schedule a tour with me today. We offer seven different neighborhoods and about 10 different tours throughout the city. Thank you all for watching. Which house was your favorite? Let us know in the comments. I'll see you next time on this house.